how is the New York Times reinforcing this anti-trans narrative? What are they doing wrong? Yeah, I, I first want to say that this isn't new. And I think that's mm -hmm. one of the important things that the contributor letter pointed out is that you can go back in history and see this over and over again. And particularly if you go back and look at early coverage of gay people, coverage of the AIDS epidemic, this is something that the Times has done by failing to have a self-reflective analysis of the biases they bring to the coverage of, of certain communities and especially the trans community. Mm -hmm. And particularly in the context of the trans community, I've been pointing out since 2016 that this has been an ongoing problem in which we see coverage of trans people done in a way that looks like a press release from a far-right organization. Not unlike how we see press releases from police uh, uh, departments coming in yeah. and becoming news stories that look like press releases. And this is incredibly insidious in this moment because we're seeing an escalating set of attacks on the trans community with over 300 pieces of legislation introduced just this year. It is February. And not only have there been 300 pieces of legislation introduced, they are the number one priority in yeah. states. In the midst of you know the continued post-pandemic realities, current pandemic realities, so many things that people are grappling with, and yet we are seeing these bills pushed through in states across the country. And this is how the, tra the Times covers our lives as if there's some sort of vast conspiracy in which there's too many of us. I think Typically, people disconnect what's going on in state legislatures, what's going on with these anti-trans bills, and the way that media is misrepresenting this. Draw the line for us directly. Yeah, I mean, I think the reality is that it's two parts of the same set of normative problems, which is that people have a reflexive discomfort and misunderstanding about trans people. Mm -hmm. That allows them to dehumanize us. That happens in the you know, Capitol buildings and that happens on the pages of the New York Times. Our bodies are talked about in sensational ways. Our healthcare is made to seem like it is part of some conspiracy in which children are being harmed. And the rhetoric of harmed children, the rhetoric of confusion about trans lives then propagates these narratives that are lifted up in state houses and then also continue to be reinforced in the pages of publications that people get their information from. And so we create a culture in which people don't understand what it means to be trans. And this isn't just about health care. I think Jonathan Chait had this piece that was like, oh, well, you know, this is about real harms, not like the bathroom mm -hmm. context, which that's just wrong. States are passing bathroom bills now. States are criminalizing trans adults going to the bathroom. None of those things have stopped. And all of them have been fueled by the way in which misinformation about trans people has been held up in a lot of publications that we would consider, consider to be center-left publications.